Customizing and formatting. As with any Microsoft software program, you can customize and format different elements to give them the look and feel that you want, or to tailor them to your own needs. In this lesson, we're going to show you how to format elements of the project screen, as well as teach you to create customized templates. On the network diagram view, you've seen the little boxes that comprise the look and feel of it. This view uses different shapes to represent different task types. Summary tasks use a slanted box shape and include a plus or minus symbol. Whether it is plus or minus depends on whether subtasks are shown or not. Subtasks are in rectangular boxes. Milestones are in diamond shaped boxes. Project allows you to change the formatting by individual box or type. To do this, go to the network diagram view by going to the view and clicking on network diagram. Right click on the task you want to change and then select format box. If you want to change all boxes, right click outside of the task boxes and select box styles. But for now, let's format the box. You'll then see this dialog box. If you want to change the border style, you can do that in the border section of this dialog box by changing the shape, color, and width. To change the background area inside the box, change the color or pattern or both in the background section. Click OK when you're finished. If I deselect the box, you can see that the border has now changed to orange. In addition to changing text boxes, you can also change the layout of your view. Of course, your options in changing the view vary greatly from network diagram to Gantt chart to calendar. To view the layout dialog box for a view, right click in the area of the view, then select layout. First, let's go to the calendar view. To view the layout dialog box for this view, right click in an area of the view, and then select layout. This is the layout dialog box for the calendar view. If I was to go back to the network diagram, then right click anywhere and go to layout, we can see the box looks a lot different. Now if I go back to the Gantt chart view, right click in the graphic part of the view, so not the table on the left, in the graph part on the right, right click there and go to layout, you can see the dialog box is different again. The settings in all three dialog boxes allow you to change how the elements are arranged on the page and how dependency links are shown. You can spend time playing around with the options for each view and you are certainly welcome to do that. However, for now, we're just going to present the formatting options given to you with each view and explain what they do. So this table shows the different layout options and what they do. In the calendar view, you have Use Current Sort Order, which uses the latest sort order applied to tasks. Attempt to fit as many tasks as possible, ignores the sort order, and fits as many tasks into a date box as possible. Show Bar Splits means whenever you have a task that shows a periods of inactivity, this task can be displayed as split into different parts over the time it takes to complete. Automatic Layout modifies the layout to accommodate the insertion of tasks. In the Network Diagram view, you have Layout Mode Area, which allows for automatic or manual positioning. The Box Layout Area allows you to align boxes, adjust alignment, spacing, and height. You can also modify how summary tasks will be displayed. Link Style Area allows modification of the styles in which dependency link lines and labels appear. Link Color Area sets the colors for links. Diagram Options Area, this controls the background color and patterns for the boxes. It also controls how page breaks as well as progress on tasks are shown. The Gantt Chart View has several other options. Links, style of lines for the dependency links. The Date Format changes the format used to display the date in task bars. The Bar Height adjusts the height of the task bars in points. Always roll up Gantt bars means if you select this option, task bar details will roll up to the highest level summary task. Round bars to whole days. Just as it sounds, this allows project to round bars up so only whole days appear. Show bar splits means whenever you have a task that shows periods of inactivity, this task can be displayed as split into different parts over the time it takes to complete. And show drawings means if you include drawings, they will be displayed on screen and in the printed version. To modify grid lines, Go to the area of any view that contains a grid, such as in Gantt Chart View or Calendar View. Right click and select Grid Lines. You'll then see the Grid Lines dialog box. In the Line to Change list, select the grid line that you want to change. In the Normal section, Type and Color allow you to select the line style and color. At Interval allows you to use a contrasting color at various intervals in the grid so that's easier to read. Click OK when you're finished. You can use the drawing toolbar to draw images in the chart area of the Gantt chart view. To do this, go to the Gantt chart view, then go to the Format tab, and click on the Drawing drop-down arrow. Now choose the type of shape you want to draw. Click in the area of the chart where you want to add your drawing and drag your mouse until the drawing appears as you want it. 
release the mouse button. You can also move it around in a similar way as you do in other Office programs. We've already learned how to use a filter earlier in this course. However, you can add filters to any bit of information. To create a filter, go to the Gantt chart view. Display the fields or columns that you want to filter. So let's say we want to filter on some of these columns. Click the arrow you want to filter. We're going to select task name and put a filter on it. Select the criteria you want for the filter or click on custom. To do this, click on the filters button and then click on custom. When you click custom, this dialog box appears. In this box, you can set choices that are specific to each field of information. Click OK when you're finished. This filter will filter on tasks that contain the word research. When I click OK, only the tasks that have the word research in the name are displayed. The filters we've just used are pre-designed filters. You can also create your own. Here's how. Go to the View tab and then go to Filter in the Data Group. Click on the drop-down box and then click Clear Filter to remove the filter from earlier on. Now click on the drop-down box and click on More Filters. The More Filters dialog box will appear, as you can see. Choose either the task or resource to let Project know which list of filters that you want to include your new filter in. Click the New button. Type a name for the filter in the Name field. Click the first line of the field name, then click the down arrow to display your list of choices. Click a field name to select it. Repeat these steps for the test and the value columns. Test means a condition that must be met, and value is a value that you enter such as a date or cost, or a predetermined value such as baseline cost. If you want to filter this to show in the menu where you click on the filter button on the formatting toolbar, check show in menu at the top right hand corner of the dialog box. Once you've finished, click save. And then click close. The group feature allows you to organize information by certain criteria. To apply a predefined group, go to either a resource view or Gantt chart view. We're gonna to go to the Gantt chart view. Under the view tab in the data group, go to group by and click on the down red arrow. Select the criteria that you want to group by. You can now see the display has been updated to group by certain fields. A custom group has three elements, field name, field type and order. An example would be if you created a group that showed the field name and field type in a certain order, so descending or ascending. A group that was created to show tasks in descending order would list tasks in order from the longest to the shortest duration. You can also control the font that is used in different groups or the font color. To create a custom group, select the More Groups in the drop-down menu. Select if you want to group by task or resource and then click New. Now you see the Group Definition dialog box. Name your group, then click the first line in the Field Name column. As we did with the filters, a down arrow will now appear. Select a field name. Repeat these steps with the field type and the order. If you want to add more sorting criteria, click the row titled then by. You can keep adding criteria for your group by doing this. You can also check to have assignments, not tasks, grouped by clicking the group assignments. In the next section of the dialog box, you can specify font, the background color for your cells, and the pattern. If you click the define group intervals button, you can set a start time and an interval. For example, if the group by criteria is standard rate and you select an interval of $10, your groupings will be in $10 intervals with 0 to $10 in one group, and so on. Click Save to save your group, and then click Close. Templates are simply files that you create and save that have certain settings. Just think of a website template. More than likely, you've used one before. The template has text and picture fields created for you, and also some formatting. It makes it a lot easier. So will your project templates that you create because you can save your own settings. Any template you create will be saved as a project document. You can save any of your projects as templates. This is especially handy to do if you use a lot of the same tasks over and over in different projects. In addition to tasks, these following things can also be saved as projects. These following things can also be saved in project templates. All the information for each baseline. Learn about baselines later in the course. Actual values, rates for resources, and fixed costs. Save a file as a template, open the folder you want to save and then go to File and then Save As.
Microsoft Save Templates in a folder called Templates. Choose your location. And then in the Save As type, change it to Project Template. Click the Save button. When you do, the Save As Template dialog box appears. Put a check by the items that you do not want to save in your template, and then click Save. The file is now saved as a template with the MPT extension.